and it's in the hands of the VCU Rams. Theus to Daniels. And a little zone look now just to shake it up, slow this team down. The team speed exceptional. Scoring 35 or more points in the paint. So we mentioned that turnover percentage. VCU right around 29%. Fordham's turning it over on almost 31 that 25 point margin at the break it looked like uh, a freeway exit mm -hmm. and they saw Kretzer involved in that play unable to get free for some open looks Daniels is in now it's good that Daniels is going he needed this kind of game he sure did he's 9 of 17 from the field 6 of 12 from beyond the three point arc he's in the corner looking to add another Kwame Mitchell and New Mexico State is going to need more of that Mullings is their best score, the 6'2 sophomore out of Toronto. One of the many have more opportunities to get in the scoring column. We certainly know he can shoot the ball and shoot it well. He just hasn't, as you pointed out, maybe been taking as many shots. A nice look in. And for St. Louis. Yeah, I think St. Louis has controlled the middle on the defensive end. And that's what... scores if in fact Louisville extends that pressure. Wichita State begins the second half with its first five. Louisville has handcuffs starting the second half and that's going to be on Jang. And this is not how Jamie Dixon wants to play but based upon the personnel that he's matching up with playing his own is an interesting matchup for him. Led by as many as three. Chargers to get back-to-back -back triples. Carl Hall with the baby hook. This game with the big threes, both from Albrecht and Levert in that first half. That really set the tone for that game. Chang from the outside, and he Chang, outside shot. Practice sets where you play five against seven. So you react a little better to the press and the traps. It's a crazy drill, but this is like what you have to do again. Call for the foul. That's important. If Carolina can get with the foul trouble, it, it really dramatically changes. Back in the first half, we talked about how Bob Huggins says he still has not found the right combination. A lot of guys seeing a lot of minutes, but he can't find the best five out there. History. 17-point Arizona lead. Here's Clark. That's Thomas. There you see the advantage Ohio State has enjoyed points in the paint. A D with a three. How about that? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Johnny Orr had some great teams. McGee's three. Your team has got three fouls. It's so important that he stays engaged and focused on the bench because they're going to need him. Day and said, what are you most thankful for? No hesitation, he said, my mom. And his smile just lit up the entire Tafner practice gym. Faradell missing a three. For that, Nation now with four blocks. Cook has 13 points. What an answer by the Dukes after LIU got the lead, and there's a lot of family tree. And A.J., who started out his career at Wyoming, ended up transferring and joining his cousin. All of those things that have led this team through the course of the year. It's just a lot of guys ganging yep. up on them. Yep. Nice Stout pass. Pass. Beauty. Magic. 509 remaining. And a 13-point Michigan lead. A nice handoff gets the open look. May or may not be available. It's Brian Walsh and Pat Forsyth. We'll see when the Zips take the floor. Those two with severe flu symptoms. At the up. Again, Shannon Scott has played fantastic all season at that point guard position for the Buckeyes. Thomas for three. Changed the game against Michigan with that in. Very move right there. The Wolverines had no answer for him down on the block. Thomas driving and...
sure about I'll, the signals. I was, was going to say, just like you used to do back in the day, yeah. right? Well, look, you still save it, so you remember it. McKnight sets his screen. Comer looking. Oh! Oh! Versus trying to get back in this game, turning up the defensive intensity a little bit. Their coach is fired up trying to get his team back in it. Comer off the glass. I but Cincinnati, they've been hanging their head on, is they're a very good defensive team, only allowing opponents about 38% from the floor. We see Creighton with a 63% mark in the first half here. Yeah, Creighton excellent at moving the ball and making After that jumper, a lot of barking going on out there, Jim. Lots of wear. How much uh, gas they may have left if this game is competitive in the last five minutes. There's a dump down again to Murphy. Easy doing. Basketball, Miami lost for the first time in ACC play. On the road against the bottom division team in Wake Forest. Here's Frazier. The last time they scored in the half court. Ellis gets it down low with E. Hard to take a block away from Wicket. That's exactly right. And there is Wicket. At every opportunity, they'll full court press some, and they'll also mix defense as man and zone. Dotson, and he gets the artist, freshman point guard, back in the starting lineup for the Ducks. That's the key guy for Oregon. He missed nine games with a foot injury. They were five and four in his absence. He's played the to start this game that Cowboys fans hoped he would. And this is, I think this is a danger zone for Oklahoma State. They can't get themselves too far behind. Heat on that one for how close they were together. That's a lot. Kazimi bowls his... Oh, there it is, but I... <laughs> how often do you see it, though? It's just a funny shot. Clark gets it in. Oh. Is truly getting his legs. He's never played in a college basketball game before, and this is his first after being in the hospital. Much needed three, or it's a. Is guarding him, Smith, down on the blocks. Clark, the floater, doesn't go. Justin Martin called for his first foul, second on Xavier here in the second half, and here's Rodney Clark. That floater comes up a little short. Rodney Clark sits down. Alex Barlow comes on for Butler. And Xavier, a dominant performance over Fairleigh Dickinson, 117-75.